gentlemen, welcome Max Beer. Picture at 1930, you have a boxing event to attend to. This is not your first rodeo. And then all of a sudden on this faithful night, your hands become very deadly. This is the story of Mr. Max Beer. Maximum Beer was born February the 11th, 1909 to Mr. Jacob Jr. and Mrs. Dora. They will go on to have three children. Another brother will go on to be an actor and a boxer as well. His name is Jacob Jr., a.k.a. Buddy. Maximum is, well, they are all born in Omaha, Nebraska. And in 1921, they will move on to Livermore, California. Dad is a butcher, and he decides that um, he wants to help out dad in the eighth grade. So now Max drops out of school and his job is to, to carry the dead carcasses of the animals on his back. I'm pretty sure that this job consisted of him, his shoulders being a little bit more broader, his little chest probably be poking out. He's a little, probably a little different from your average eighth grader, right? For some strange reason, Kids were best with him. And I don't mean his kids' ages. I mean, like, teen kid ages were bothering him. But he wasn't the one to pick a fight. He wasn't the one to, to, to you know, end all in a fight neither. So his other siblings would step in and make whoever was bothering baby brother to back on up. His sports was not boxer. He was never supposed to be a boxer. His sport was either going to be a football player or a baseball player. And then uh, things changed because I guess it became known that he didn't stand up for himself. So one night it was a teen party going on or it was a party going on and the teen boy accuses young Max Mind you, he's in the eighth grade. He accuses young Max of stealing some wine for a school dance or something like that. And he actually goes and attacks young Max. And while he is attacking Max, Max is laying there getting assaulted by this older kid. And it's stated that he is laughing. What are you laughing at? This is not funny. This young boy is trying to harm you. It is stated that he was balled up. He balled up in a curtal position like this. And he took his left, his right hand and he knocked his ass out. Once he knocked him out, he didn't want to smoke with him no more. But not only did the teenager boy didn't want to smoke with him no more, no one else bothered Mr. Max Beer no more. So after this, he thinks, hmm, maybe I should try this out. I think I might like this. No, he does not become a bully. What he decides to do is he decides to get a 25 cent box of bag and make the era of the ranch that no one uses his jump. Well, of course, he's still young. He doesn't know what the heck he's doing. So he decides, I think I'm going to need some assistance. Some way, somehow, he gets his connections in order and he gets someone to help him train. In the midst of him getting someone to help him train, he um, he decides that he wants to he wants to become a prize fighter. But once again, he's still unexperienced. He's not on that level yet. The people that's training him is looking at him like, yeah, I don't know. But that right hand, we can work with because that right hand is powerful. It was something about that right hand, even from the night of him being attacked, that I guess you could say sparked a new light. I guess. Okay. <laughs> so by the age of 21, Max now is a draw card. And if you guys know anything about a draw card, you know that the draw card is where the money is at. This is how you get your name buzzing, all right? So as he's in a draw card, he is now nicknamed Livermore Lepore. I don't know. And then he's also nicknamed Mad Cat Maxi, and he has a list of other names as well, okay? And then he participates in the boxing tournaments because that's what you have to do. Even then, even now, 
you have to participate in the boxing tournament so that people could know who you is and that's how you get your rank up okay so he he um he goes into the boxing tournaments and then at the age of um at the age of I want to say 25 cuz in 1929 he turned pro and when he turned he begins boxing in 1929 Nine to 1941. His debut is May 16th. And his wins is 66. His losses is 13. His KOs is 51. And he has three losses to a KO. His first match is May 16th, 1929 to Chief Kamra. He wins to TKO. His second match is Frankie Campbell. August 25th, 1930. May 5th, 1931. John Riscio loses to a UD undecided decision. Ernie Schaff, August 30, 31st, 1932, he wins for the mandatory decision. Um, April 14th, 1941, Lou Nova, he loses to a TKO. Okay? So, on August the 25th of 1930, this is the match with Mr. Frankie and Mr. Max. And it stated that Basically, Mr. Frankie didn't want to get down, so he laid him down. The second match states that he hit him in the temple, and when Mr. Beer hit Frankie in the temple, he hit his head on a metal turnbuckle, and he never got back up. Either which way it goes, Mr. Frankie never gets back up again. It takes the ambulance an hour to get to him. Mr. Frankie is still not up yet, okay? So, the wife, I'm assuming, decides to go ahead and get an autopsy done. When the wife gets the autopsy done, she finds out that he had a extensive brain hemorrhage. Basically, he got his brains knocked loose. The boxes, the manager, everyone eats this up because they are now labeled him as the killer ring box, right? And they might be kicking in and making money and, and promoting this horrible incident. But Max isn't, the family isn't, and neither is his kids, and neither is definitely not the wife, okay? Because who the hell thinks that after their husband is going to earn some money that they will never return back to their family. So, Max is charged for manslaughter. He is charged for manslaughter. He is, um, California does not want him to perform for a whole year. And um, he, he is reported to quit boxing even after the suspension in general. Like, he could have just went to somewhere else and performed, but he just had to take a sit back. Max Beer Jr. in the autobiography said stated that his dad had nightmares and he cried numerous days because of this. Not days, not years, but the son stated that this tortured him for decades. And I could only Okay, so he quits boxing for a couple of months, and then he also go his and he puts Frankie kids through college. Okay, and then some way somehow the charges are laid off on drop. He goes back into the ring, and when he goes back into the ring, no one is hurt, no one is harmed, everyone is okay. He has another rodeo with a a, a boxer by the name of Mister Schaffer. Ernie. This is a rematch. Now, in this rematch, the 10th round comes up and they rumbling in, in the jungle, right? And they, they getting busy with each other. As they getting busy with each other, something snap in Mr. Max's head because he hit him in the temple as well. And for the six months after Mr. Ernie got hit in the temple from Mr. Bear, he was fine until the people and his team started realizing you ain't moving the way you used to move. 
You're looking a little slower in the ring, son. Is you okay? I got headaches. What do you mean you got headaches? Yeah, he started receiving headaches after this match. And to me, it's given what happened to Mr. Ali. It's given the Buster Douglas, how they said that, uh, what's that devil man name? Don King. It's given... It's given that. I, I'm not saying that Mr. Chef or Mr. Max uh, manager was Don Kingen. I hope he wasn't. But I'm just saying it's given that because we're going to talk about that when we get to the Muhammad Ali video, okay? The Mr. Muhammad Ali video, right? But it's definitely given the punishment that he received from that night disrupted the rest of his boxing bouts because once again, they, they stated that he was perform slowly after this he never performed up to his full potential that he did previously to this and on a faithful night with i don't know who the opponent is this is that is the last time mr scab will, will box because he passes away in the ring with another opponent okay so i'm not sure if Mr. Scab just thought about, you know, this is what comes with the territory. I still got to put money on the table to feed my kids, my wife. You know, I got things I got to do. Or if maybe he didn't take it seriously. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But that that's what had happened, y'all. So we are going to get into um, his, his new gimmick. Because now... He feels as though he is now responsible for another person's life being tragically st stopped at a halt. Like, <sighs> okay. Once he returns, he decides something has got to change. This is not right. What the hell am I doing wrong? Because the right hand at this moment, sir, it got to go. And so I'm hitting people with a head and damn tip. That's the problem right there. You keep hitting these men in the temple. And the right hand was already dirty. The right hand been something to work with ever since he was in the eighth grade. We talking about 19, 1930 now. All right. Okay. So now he is puts on a clown buffoonery, right? So now he decides, okay, Something got to change. I got to switch it up. Let me go in being a quirky, my, my quirk, a quirky side of me. Let me put all the serious to the side and let's switch it up a little bit. So now he goes in and he's basically Muhammad Ali in the situation again. And I only say this because of hard pause. Don't you go no damn way. You stay your ass right there. And I'm going to tell y'all why I say this because Muhammad used to mess with people. Before he whooped your behind, he would have you looking at him like, what is he doing? Why is he jumping up around? Why is he doing all of this? Master Max Bear did the same thing as well. That's the only reason why I keep, that's the only reason why I say it's giving Muhammad Ali. Because Mr. Max Bear did the same exact thing. Mr. Max Bear decided now to put on a clownish behavior, as you could say. He will go ahead and he will circle around in the ring and he will make the crowd laugh and he will make the opponents laugh and make everybody laugh because he didn't want to hurt anyone no more. It is stated that he put on this, this new person now because he just wanted to, oh my God, he wanted to try to ease the pain that he caused for the families and for himself. Because now it was being looked at. He was a dangerous man to work with. And yeah, two people passed away on out of the hand out of the account of your hands. Yeah, you you're, you're a little bit more you're a little bit more dangerous than an average person. Okay? Smoking Joe. Speaking of smoking Joe. But anywho, so Jack DePency. Which, once again, he was his mentor and he became his friend. He stated that 
He was not that type of guy. His persona was taken from a different perspective. At the end of the day, he was a fun, loving, family type of guy who liked the party. And he he just enjoyed life, okay? And he enjoyed life so much that he got married not one time, but two times. Because in 1931 to 1933, he married a woman by the name of Dorothy Dunbar July 8th, okay? And then his second wife would be May Sullivan, June 29th, 1935, up until he passed away. He will go on to have three children. We already discussed his son by the name of Mr. Max Bear Jr. He was born 1931. If I'm not mistaken, he's saying that the man's still alive. Salute, because that's a that's a long lifespan right there. They don't make you like that no more, okay? His other, his other son named James was born in 1941. Unfortunately, he passed away in 2009. And then you have Maddie. Maddie um, was born in 1944, and it's not stating when she passed away, okay? So now um, he befriends Joe Lewis. I'm not sure if he befriends Joe Lewis before the, the, the boxing match that they had or if it was after, but him and Joe Lewis do become friends, okay? And he then decides that he wants to retire at 1941. But when he retired, he goes into in-ring refereeing, all right? And then he decides that he wants to act. He acts, um, and then it's stated that he had over 20 movies. And I promise y'all right now, if y'all go on YouTube and you type up Max there, he will show up on some dang on movies. And one of the movies that I did watch was like an animal movie type of thing. I did like it because it showed the different side of him. It showed more like a goofy side of him. And then he has other romantic movies and boxing movies as well where he could just play yourself in it. But he was doing it. He, he did to me. I see he did. I think he was doing a good thing. He also starred in the TV shows as well. Okay. So he backed away from boxing and put all his eggs and his basket into acting and show business. Okay. Cause that's where the money was at as well. All right. So, um, they will go on. He will go on to live until the age of 50 in Hollywood. And sadly, November 21st, 1959, he passes away from a heart attack. And his pa beer is no other than Jack DePensey and Joe Lewis. This is stated, this is not his first time having a heart attack. But this one right here was the one. And I feel like he knew this was the one. Okay? So... We're gonna get into his belt, his um, his his belt titles, and I'm gonna give y'all my opinion. All right. So now he is a three-time champ. Um, he wins the National Boxing Association, the New York State Athletic Commission, the Ring Heavyweight, and then he is inducted into the Boxing Hall of Fame in um, 1968, the World Boxing Hall of Fame in 1984. Intercontinental Boxing Hall of Fame, 1995, Rain Magazine, 2003. He is known as 100 Greatest Punchers of All Time. Max Bear Hart Fund is um, up up and uh, running in 1959, and then he also has a park funded in his name called the Max Bear Field. I don't know how to, I don't know about him allowing people to attack him because the sibling that stood up for him was his sister. Maybe she just, my main play, my sister said you got me fucked up. You keep, keep your hands off my brother. Okay. He might not be the fighter, but I am. Okay. But it also goes back to stating that even in his adult life, he just was a fun person to be around. That persona of him being a in, in ring performer killer was not it at all. So I'm now believing more of what Mr. Jack DePensy has stated. And I'm also believing the other articles that I read that he was not that type of man that they were trying to put him out to be. Okay. So I feel like 
that night that he actually did defend himself, it made him feel really good about himself. And it made him feel like he could stand on his own two toes and he didn't need no one else and no one else would bother him again. I feel like that let out a monster inside of him. I also feel like I don't, I don't think he was hitting them in the head, in the temples deliberately. I think that maybe he seen that person that was always bothering him because you never know what another person is thinking. And even if you go into a, this is what you've been going through for the past two years, that person can make the beast, everything that you've been holding inside of you come out of you and you can seriously harm someone like that. So I just say, if you ain't fighting a long dang on time, don't fight in a long dang on time some more. Okay. Him sending the kids to school, I think, was an honorable thing. And I also felt like he felt he had to do something because it was his responsibility to send the kids there because it was basically his fault that they no longer had a parent. And I don't know what I could, I couldn't fathom you being home, with whatever the case may be. You at home with your babies and you're chilling and you get a... And you go to the door, do, 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 do. hey, hey, how you know what's going on? Your husband is deceased. Why? You mean I just seen something about three hours? What you talking about? Like, I could not. <sighs> I would probably lost all rabbit cells. Like, what? Because what, what you mean? Come in and sit down and talk to me. What you mean? Because I'm coming down there where he at. But back then, you couldn't go down there. Once again, the women were not allowed to engage in no type of boxing events. Unless Big Daddy says so. If Big Daddy ain't say so, God sat on down. You ain't going nowhere. Sat on down with them children. You're going to do whatever you're going to do. But you don't show up to the boxing event. But see, that's why I couldn't have made it back then. Because see, I would have got beat. I probably would have got beat up. Because I want to know who was responsible for this. Is what I want to know. I don't think they looked at it like you knew that you wasn't feeling well and you still remained on the keep. But once again, that was probably his only income. A lot of these boxers. Okay. So I don't know if you guys been following me early on, early on, some of these boxers took their money and invested into clubs and, and gyms and business. They opened up shop, right? Some of these boxers, some of them did not, they didn't do anything with their money. They looked at that like that was going to keep the money flowing with for the rest of their life. And I don't know if Mr. Schaff did have any other businesses, but if you all of a sudden start receiving frequent headaches out of the blue and your performance is blue, you need to sit the heck down somewhere and think about doing a Rocky move. You know, when Rocky was like, yo, Adrian, I can't box no more. I'm about to try my hand in acting. You better do that right there. Because what, what you're still trying to box for? Are you trying to yourself? Like, what are you trying to do? What are you trying to prove here? I had an Adrian moment. I apologize about that. But anywho, I feel like Max opened up the doors for his future as well. Because once again, the little brother decided that he wanted to do the same thing as well. Not only did the brother, but his son, Max Beer Jr., went on to become an actor. I'm not sure if he went on to be a boxer. I didn't see anything about him boxing, but I do know for sure he went on to be an actor as well, okay? So I think that he opened up the legacy. I didn't see any other businesses behind him, but I'm pretty sure that that foundation, I didn't see that it was closed or not. So I'm pretty sure that foundation kept the money roaring in. Um, for the family, his family, the future family, the Max Bear Jr. family, families and families, okay? Because his name is still there and the freaking, the 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 park that they have is freaking, oh, I want to go. It's in Livermore and I want to go. I'm serious. If you live in Livermore, California, go over there to the Max Bear Field and let me know how it look. <laughs> 
let me know Sh shoot a text a video or something uh, go uh, go check out my gmail or my instagram and let me know what it looked like right now because with the pictures that i've seen that place looks freaking beautiful because it's still open as we speak um so i think that he did leave a legacy behind i think that but it could possibly look sideways because of the the trials and the torments that he had to face. But I will say that I applaud him for not become uh, becoming addicted to any substance abuse. They said that he smoked that he began smoking cigarettes after this happened with Mr. Frankie. Baby, be glad that's all that man did was smoke a cigarette. Because somebody else would have been Christina Aguilera in this situation, okay? He didn't take his that he didn't take it out on no one else. Um, he didn't beat on the children. He didn't beat on he. It made him. If anything, I feel like it hurt it him. It made him sit back and be like, "Yeah, I, let me change this up because this ain't right." Like I, that lets you know the type of person that he was. And I meant to tell y'all that he had over fifteen hundred people at his service, so he couldn't have been what they really tried to portray him to be after all, because 1,500 people was a lot of people to attend. And rather they love you or they hate you. And I'm pretty sure it wasn't a, a hate, a hate situation with Mr. Max Beer. I just don't feel that way. There's nothing that I researched that stated he was a hated man. He was an angry man. He was nothing, not nothing. I can't find not nothing. You, I put you to the challenge. You go on in, you see if you can find something on Mr. Max Beard stating that he was a monster. 